I'm going to show you through this starter pack that we have developed for agency owners. Now, this is to allow you to start with a base and then evolve this to add the data sets that you need, as well as any workflow that's going to match your processes, procedures and your data. Let me take you through the system and then if you make a copy of this base, you can start to play around with it and then evolve it to your needs. Now, first of all, we're here in the opportunity section. I've set this one as my first tab so that when I land in it, that's the first things I'm going to see. I need to make sure that I am on top of my opportunity pipeline, but we're actually going to start off at the company level first. So let's switch over to company and we can see a very much a spreadsheet style of company data. So I can scroll along, I can see their tax rates, I can pretty much see anything that I might be interested in. But I can also switch views to say the gallery view and I can see here that we have the Acme Corporation, we have Agency Trailblazer and we have Spam Limited. If I switch back to the company view, I can also see uh, that uh, there are particular contacts at the companies. I can see any related opportunities and I can just expand those and click on any of those as well as uh, the address information, etc. So just some basic company information. Remember, with anything within Airtables, you can also start to group things as well, colorize, filter, etc. So perhaps you could group by country or whatever data sets you wanted to. Also, if there's any fields that you just don't need to see, you can just right click and either delete them if they're not something you're ever going to use. Or if there's something you're going to use in the future, you can at least hide the field. All right, so from the company, we then also have our contacts. So here we've got a view that I've created for the contacts um, where we are grouped by type. So we actually like to track our team members in the contacts as well as our suppliers, as well as our clients. And um, so here we have our team members and we have some clients in this group as well. We've got two contacts at Acme Limited. We've got one at Spam Limited, which is Porky Pig. Again, we've got the card view so that we can see images of any of the awesome clients and team members that we have in the system and we can obviously access very quickly their information as well. Um, let me then move on to the opportunity. Here in the opportunity, we can actually see the different stages that our opportunities are at. These are all live opportunities, um, as well as our one ones here. And we can filter these out to hide, say, the lost ones, and we can group them by other elements. For us, we like to be able to group by our stages. This also allows us to therefore create this pipeline where we can see that if a lead it comes in, we can have the lead there, and then we can move the opportunity through the different stages until we've won the project. Eventually it could be closed and it might be a closed loss project or it might be a closed one project, but at least here we can track our process and we can essentially um, set up notes and comment to each other, say at Larissa uh, and blah, 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 I need her to do something, etc. And then she'll be um, noted on this particular opportunity. If we uh, also take a look at the calendar view, we can also see when some of these opportunities are due for as well, which is quite useful because it means that we need to keep on top of um, of the activity that we need to do to make sure that we're selling things. So this is our opportunities. Um, from an opportunity, we might meet, need to do a quote, which will eventually become a project. So we have everything inside of the project section. And if we just double check this status here, we've got lead, live and complete. So if this was the status of lead, this means is that we're making a quote for our client. Uh, once it's accepted, we would have this as a live project um, and then complete. And you can add other statuses in here as well. So for example, um, you may uh, want to write uh, another status for rejected or archived or whatever for elements that don't get accepted. So this particular project is the meat free sausage email campaigns that we're doing for Porky Pig. He really wants people to be eating vegetarian sausages. Um, you can see here that we have a list of deliverables against this and we also have the invoice as well, which is pulling through um, the invoice total. You can also see as well how much time we've spent on this. And you'll see here as well that I actually forgot to um, link the opportunity up here. So I've just linked the opportunity and then I can set an owner. So who's owning this particular project and as well as add any supporting attachments. You can see here as well uh, the contact. Now remember any of this information you don't necessarily need to see. You can certainly hide it um, and you can also drag and drop the order until you are happy with the information that you have. You can also create as many views as you want um, based off these to hide certain fields on certain views. So you're just seeing essential information. Um, I'm, uh, if we just go to all data as well, we have 
uh, all of our information we can then change the groupings etc what I would like to do um, is show you how to add records in different ways as well um, so if you bear with this video alright so we have our project here and so we'll use this as our quote etc at that point if we want to actually build up some sort of a, a, a price or a project for sorry a, an estimate for our client we would actually go into deliverables here and you can see in here that we've created a range of deliverables against this project so um, we would be sourcing an email template we'd be customizing the template to match the brand of the content and then we'd be sending um, it and uh, we're attributing uh, a total uh, say a sum total here so here we've got it's going to take us uh, sorry it's a one quantity of one and the rate is 100 if I was to change this to 100 as well and then change this uh, rate to, uh, sorry this quantity to two and um, then we will you'll automatically see that the price updates here etc and you can set whatever hourly rates for whatever type of uh, elements that you want to do but this is essentially uh, what we would be sending as part of our quote and you can create a new document over here we've done you an example of a invoice template so you could probably clone that and create something very similar uh, as a quote template as well uh, you would just simply go in here and duplicate the block and then just redesign this so that you also have a quote template that you're client can accept based on the deliverables now <coughs> excuse me on the deliverables as well you can also see an estimate so this is where we would input our actual estimate of time um, so this is going to take one hour two hours and one hour's clients don't need to see this but this is very useful for us internally because we also track against all the related tasks and then sum those up so we can see how long we spent against each project so I can see here that uh, I was four four minutes under I was an hour and 10 minutes under on this way and I was eight minutes under on this so overall we've been this has been a pretty profitable uh, project for us um, it's been it's been great Porky Pig is super happy and we're happy as well uh, and obviously there's other uh, supporting data in here there's the related invoice uh, project reference all of all of that supporting information and again you can clone this view as many times as you want and remove any elements you don't want to see just by hiding them to give you nice clean crisp interfaces but obviously we're giving you everything here now to um, track all of these times that we have against uh, against these deliverables we're doing this in tasks so we can see here that we have a list of tasks these tasks are grouped by um, the owner so the owner is Lee Jackson and then they're organized by the the date and um, that they're to be done on or due by um, so here I have our date and these are all the specific tasks that I have going on um, right now so you'll see here that I need to get the approval on the template um, I can work on this when I am happy and that it is complete I can then mark that as complete and then continue and work my way through these projects now what we also do and I will add this now is we will say that complete is equal to blank so when I complete an item it or <coughs> excuse me it automatically gets removed from the system um, so you can see here now that we've sent the campaign let's send the campaign and finally we just have monitor the campaign left now remember you can create as many views as you want personal and shared views so you could create project specific views of your tasks or you could just simply show all of your own tasks across all projects or you could show all tasks for every single person as well um, and that's the, the way that we roll now with regards to tracking the time etc um, what we do here is we're having our time tracked via the time tracker that uh, is inbuilt um, you don't have to you can input your own time however if we're going to start tracking time you just simply find the particular task that you're going to track against and now as you can see we're tracking our time against that until I'm ready to stop tracking and then that will update the date uh, sorry that will update the time against that particular element etc so this is our one outstanding uh, task if we switch over to the invoice as well now um, we can finally see that we have <coughs> excuse me our invoice number and that are related to the particular project uh, that we're invoicing the status at the moment is sent you can add all your own in we've got draft sent in progress and paid you can pr maybe put overdue or anything else that you might want to put in there there's our related project there's the related deliverables uh, we have our subtotal that is calculated from the deliverables and we also have the um, total which includes tax for one of the elements because in some countries you have um, tax items where certain things are taxable certain things are not um, so that's calculating that that's telling you what the actual VAT amount is you could potentially what well, we call it VAT. you can change it to tax potentially you could hide that because you don't actually need to see that you can see that there but uh, just remember they're all up there however invoice date due date contact uh, company and owner and all of that then gets um, uh, 
put out into this template here that you can see, which is our um, uh, excuse me, our invoice template, which you can edit, put your own logo in, put your own company and address information, put your own terms and conditions in there. This is also what you can use, like I said, for estimates or other sorts of documentation that you want just by adding a block in here and adding whatever information you need to. Uh, please bear in mind, of course, that uh, you will probably need the pro uh, version of Airtables if you're going to use a lot of these extra features. All right. Um, lastly, we'll just show you where we're tracking tax. For tax, uh, tax does change now and again. So these are currently the tax systems that we have inside of our QuickBooks. So we've copied them across to the base so that you guys can use them if you're based in the UK and if you're using QuickBooks because um, we've got Zapier to integrate with these. So these are ours. Um, if these change, we will then create new ones and then uh, change them to current and change these to archived. Um, at least then old tasks are still monitored against the archived um, tax rates. So if the tax rate was 15%, which it used to be here in the UK, if it was 15% um, on that particular invoice for that particular task the last financial year, that's fine. That still stays there um, because we're going to archive all of these and then create the new tax rates to reflect that. So that's in there as well to give us coverage. And then what we have with regards to things like our invoicing contacts, etc., is Zapier integrations so that um, our contacts will go into our MailChimp. We've got um, our invoices going into our account system. Um, uh, so, you know, all of this information will go in as line items, etc., from the deliverables um, and essentially build up a, a clone of the invoice inside of our QuickBooks as well. And we'll also take uh, the invoice number that we've established in there. So all of those sorts of integrations, they're things that you'll have to do with your own uh, Zapier setups or whatever automation tools you use and whatever third party uh, software tools you have. Like I said, this is a starter pack, but very much ready for you to rock and roll. Remember, if you're a premium member, you can see how we build um, apps like this, which will give you a better understanding of how to customize these sorts of systems. Now, I'm just going to walk you through the general usage of how you might add information. Um, and then if you're happy, go ahead and copy the base and just put as much fake information in as you want. Have fun, maybe use Looney Tunes characters like I've said, and just uh, just see how you might be able to use a system like this. The purpose for this starter system is either to give you something that you can build upon within Airtables, which you can then use for your business, and or it's to give you the understanding of the sorts of data that you might need to be managing within your business and then making sure that whatever solution you have is delivering for you. All right, so if we're going to be adding a company, what we have here is a form that you can use and you can put all of these in a bookmark bar. That's what we do. Um, we've got a little bookmark bar, which, which you can't see. I wonder if I can just show you this sidebar. Here we go. So I can add a new task, new project. Um, we can check my tasks, etc., and I can see all sorts of other bases that I've set up. Um, you can use a, that. That's a plugin for Chrome, or you can just use the standard bar. And these forms will then show up. So your users can then essentially add in a brand new company, um, or they could go ahead and add forms uh, f for say the project. So if we go to the project, they could add a new project that way, um, or they could go ahead and add, um, so let's say a, a deliverable or whatever else. So we've created forms and these are all customizable. So you can drag and drop in the relevant fields that you want your users to be able to select. So for example, if somebody was going to add you a new task, let's just go in, let's open the form, uh, test task. I'll assign this as a priority two. I can set a due date and then I can add a collaborator. Uh, I could then link this to a particular deliverable and then submit. So that now will appear in the task list for Lee. So let's just go back to all tasks. There's Lee. Here's the test task. If I'm happy that I've done this, I can then just close this task off. Job done. Happy days. Um, with regards to the, the process flow, uh, we would always start with the company. We then add the, the multiple or the single contact to that company. So we have company, then we have the related contact. Then we would have the opportunity that we're going to have with that uh, contact. So it might be the new perfume website or uh, the hunting season uh, poster, etc. Um, when they're ready for quotes, we will then create a new project. That project would initially be, like I said, from those statuses, uh, would initially be a lead as opposed to um, a live project, etc. And we will then use that to relate our deliverables to. Those deliverables will be essentially the line items against that project, which 
at the moment would start off as a lead or, or as a quote and then we would move it through the process and then as we start to deliver this we can then track all of our related tasks against those deliverables which allow us to then track our time and we can then report on this to see whether or not uh, we have had a profitable project a project where our estimates were good and we can learn as well from all of that and then when we're finally ready we can essentially invoice um, that project nice and easily from here um, just set up the est establish the particular invoice information and then we can get that sent over using this document over here and that's essentially the flow through the system so we're going to get this finished up and then we will put a link for you to view the base and at the top right hand side you will be able to click on copy base so you can make a clone and then have a go at evolving this for your agency